Hi, I'm Mrs McTaggart. In this video, we're looking at higher quadratic theory again. And in this one, we're looking at intersecting lines and curves. So quite often at higher, you're asked to find points of intersection of a line with a curve or two curves. And this is a necessary bit that you'll need when you come to do integration later on. So, so whenever you're asked to find the point of intersection, so far you've been doing it with simultaneous equations. You might have been shown the y equal to y method when it was two straight lines. This also applies when you've got a line and a curve or two curves. It is the only option in this case though. So when we're setting y equal to y, my top tip is to always put your quadratic on the left-hand side or the one that's going to have the highest um, power of x squared just because it means that you're always bringing your algebra to the left to the left to the left like Beyonce says and it definitely helps you um, it's just the way you like it most people like doing it to the left so let's write this out so we're going to put the x squared plus 2x minus 11 equal to 4x minus 3 okay and then we're going to move everything to the left hand side like Beyonce so this become 2 take away 4 so minus 2x and this will become a plus 3, so minus 11 plus 3 would give me, oops a daisy, it would give me minus 8 equal to 0. Then we're going to factorise um, numbers that multiply to 8 and add to 2, or some combination of 4 and 2. To get that negative, it's going to have to be negative 4 plus 2. And then when you solve them, you get x equals 4 and you get x equals minus 2. So we already have two parts of a coordinate. Now, A is the one that's further to the left. So A is going to have the negative 2 value. And B is going to have the 4 something value. So I'm just going to come back to that in a wee second. Now, to get X, you substitute your X values back into Y. Now, the easiest one to do here is you sub it back into the equation of a straight line. So if X is 4, Y will be 4 times 4 take away 3. So y will give you 16 take away 3 is 13. So the b coordinate is then 4, 13. I'm just going to write this over here. And then if I do the other one, um, when x is minus 2, I'm going to have 4 times minus 2 take away 3, which is minus 8 take away another 3 is minus 11. So that came from the a coordinate, which is minus 2, minus 11. And both of them kind of match the picture. Um, obviously, it's not drawn to scale, but they are in the right kind of quadrants for it. So there we find our two points of intersection. Now, sometimes there's only one point of intersection. That's a special case where the line is actually a tangent to curve. In this scenario, there are two. Now, it also applies when you're having to find the points of intersection of two curves. So here are my two curves, and the equations are on the picture for this one. So when I'm setting y equal to y on this one, I'm going to put the positive x squared on the left-hand side. So I'm going to put the trinomial on the left. And I'm going to put that equal to 9 minus x squared. Then I'm going to bring everything over to the left-hand side. So this will give me 2x squared, because that will turn positive. Um, there is no x term to tidy up. But my numbers will now give me negative 21 take away 9 is negative 30 equals 0. Now always look for common factors because it makes your factorising a lot simpler. Um, so this is what we get when we take out a common factor of 2. And then two brackets, we're looking for numbers that multiply to 15 and add to 2. Well, it's got to be a 5 and a 3. To get negative 2, the negative goes with a 5. And when we solve this, we get x equals 5 and x equals minus 3. So my c coordinate at the moment we know is minus 3 something. And my d coordinate we know is 5 something. Just going by the picture. Okay, now if they just wanted the points, they don't always have to give you the picture here. If they just wanted the points, they wouldn't have letters to them. If it's on a picture, though, you have to make sure you label them correctly by getting, well, C is the negative one, so it starts with the negative one. Now, we can actually see that C is on the x-axis, so it's going to be negative 3, 0, but I'm just going to prove it anyway. So once you know what x is, you sub it into your equation. Now, I'm going to sub it into probably the easier one. I think the easier one to sub it into is this one here, the 9 minus x squared. So y is going to be 9 minus 5 squared in this case, which is 9 minus 25, which will give me minus 16. And that means that the 5 coordinate was 5 minus 16, so d was 5 minus 16. And then we're going to do the same again for the minus 3. So it's going to be y equals 9 minus negative 3 squared, 
which is just 9 minus 9, which is 0, as it matches the picture. So C is negative 3, 0. So they are my two points of intersection. So that's the kind of style you have. If you want more practice of these, a couple on this slide here. And um, the answers will appear in a little second for them once I finish talking. And there they are. Um, hopefully you've got on okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.